<laughs> but I appreciate the the, will the chance long. for for us to come on this morning, Rick. And you know, I've been here uh, several times telling you that uh, even though Republicans control the legislature, conservatives do not. And there's a handful of us that are in the trenches on a daily basis fighting. Uh, excessive growth of government, fighting the excessive, r- ridiculous, wasteful spending, supporting the governor, especially on his budget vetoes. And this man that's with me this morning is in the trenches on a daily basis with me, uh, Senator Larry Grooms, and, and I'm uh, very pleased to have him here. Uh, Larry is, is a candidate for governor, and this time next year we'll be voting in a Republican primary, and I'm encouraging folks to take a a strong look, a, a very close look at Larry Grooms between now and then, uh, because he's he's got the the principles that we stand for, and he's proven them uh, on a daily basis in the legislature. So, mm-hmm. uh, also uh, today, Rick, we're going to be at Chick Fil A at ten thirty. Anybody that would like to come meet uh, Senator Larry Grooms, mm-hmm. or we'll be at Athens at twelve noon in Powderville mm-hmm. uh, for lunch. So. Um, at that, I uh, would like to introduce Senator Larry Grooms. Senator, glad you could join us. Good morning, and thank you so much for allowing me sure. uh, an opportunity to be on your show and talk with your listeners. Sure. Um, well, um, I, I'm offering myself as a candidate for governor. This is something I had not intended to do. I'd rather be home riding on the jet ski today. But when I see what's happening in state government, when I see what's happening with the the when I see how it impacts or will impact my children and the children of this state. I understand that I've got a dozen years in the General Assembly, and I'm either got to get in a little bit deeper or get out. The frustration level is to the point where I'm about to pop. I've gone through at least three rolls of duct tape this year trying to keep my brain in um, because of some of the things that are happening in the legislature. Uh, you can only shout so many times, and being one of 45, uh, you, you, you get an opportunity to say something, but being governor, you're one of one. You then are in the seat to lead this state. And we need leadership that will point to what is wrong and be able to point to what is right and be able to make sure that our state secures the future for our children because we're not doing it right now. We're, we're co-conspirators with the federal government in spending what we do not have, what we do not have a right to spend. My youngest son, his name is Jack. Jack is 10 years old. When Jack was born... He inherited a debt of $2,500 to the state of South Carolina. On his 10th birthday this past April, I told Jack, now you owe our state $5,000. And that happened under Republican leadership, and we can't do that. And with the stimulus money being programmed in to fund base services of government, we're creating a an, an enormous financial hole that is going to zap this state like no one's business in about two years. Mm-hmm. We, we, we can't do that. He warned to, that, didn't he? Yes, he warned that. And I, I think he'll be proven right. A lot of folks are looking at him right now and saying, hey, he, he's off his rocker. He shouldn't be doing that. He, he's, he's, he's not. He understands the economics of the situation. He understands that a little bit of pain today uh, is, is, is worth it. Because if we don't suffer a little bit of pain today, our entire economic system may find itself in ruin in years to come. All you've got to do is look at California. Their entire system is collapsing in on itself right now. They're in a $45 billion operational budget deficit. It is complete financial chaos in that state. And I'm sure, I have no doubt, there were folks that were saying, hey, this isn't such a good idea. This thing's going to collapse in on itself. We shouldn't do this. And then there were other folks that were saying, but wait a minute. It's for the children. It's for the children. Oh, please. And in the name of for the children, they are now tanking the very economy that those children are going to depend on. It's unfair. There has to be a point where we stand up and say, no more. We're not going to, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to give up on our next generation. We will provide for them the best we can. But in order to do that, we must get our fiscal house in order. Yeah, we've got a lot of people, though, out there that are more than willing to buy into the $700 million bucks and, oh, give me something because it doesn't cost me anything, but it'll cost your children, so apparently they don't give a toot about their children. That's the way I look at it. You cut it down to the bone here, like it or not, and that's the way it is. I mean, we, we are, we're a bunch of fools for doing this. This is all it is to it. I mean, you can't clean up something that's still chicken manure. It's still chicken manure. Put chocolate syrup on it if you want to. Guess what? It's still right. Yeah. It still stinks. You don't make chicken salad out of it either. You don't work. 
Some, uh, some of this stuff is not rocket science. It's common sense. Yeah, but and, there ain't none of that around. 